Hello, my name is Kasilga and I'm so glad that you're able to tune in to this week's episode of Rise Above. Wherever you may be watching from, I am just grateful that God has led you to this channel. Church may look a little bit different in times like this, but hey, there should be no stopping us from choosing to commit and connect with one another on this journey through this platform. In a few moments, Father Terence Pereira will be bringing the word of encouragement to us. And I want to encourage you to sit tight, have your Bible, have your writing materials, and let us lean in together to listen intently to what God is speaking through Him. Thank you. Welcome back. How was your time on your own? How was the time that you've spent with your family? The question last week, do you appreciate the Eucharist? So what have you come back with? How, what is your understanding of the Eucharist? Now you must keep that in focus. Just remember that. Because today as we look at the situation, you might realize, you know, one group is saying you have to do this. Another group is saying that you have to do that. Like for instance, at the beginning stages of COVID-19, they were saying you must drink more rasam, you know. Oh. And then remember Sami's restaurant was having more customers because they wanted to go and eat the spices, the spicy food, and maybe get some more rasam. And then of course it got debunked and then came along the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So there is all these voices, all these things happening. And also added to that, you have the limitations that are placed upon us by the measures. Yes, you can meet as long as it is uh, less than 10. Then after a while, no, you cannot meet with less than 10. You should be keeping a safe distance. There are so many things coming up. And then you can work at home. No, you cannot work at home. No, you've got to work completely at home. No, you can work one week at home and one week in the office. All these things. You know, it rem reminds me of a time when I went hiking with a group of youth. It was many, many years ago in Pulau Tekong. And as we were trekking, after a short distance, I told the young people, you take the lead. You find the way to where we are going. And then they say, we don't know where to go, how to go. Well, just walk straight. We might arrive somewhere. And as they went along, and when they, when they met a tree on the path, they would deviate to the left. And then they would carry on and on and on. And then they would maybe arrive at another river, stream, and then they would turn left. After about an hour, where were they? They were first lost and totally disorientated. How come? Because when they took a left at the tree, they forgot that after the tree, they must take a right in order to come back to the same path or the same direction. This is what happens when so many things are happening, so many things are coming in, we get disorientated. When we get disorientated, loss of direction, loss of sense, loss of meaning, before long we are just going to act on the survival level. What do I need in order to make it to the next step? So I make it to the next step. Then what happens? The next step. But in the end, do we know where we are going? We are only thinking about the next step. The Lord offers us eternal life. What are we taking from the Lord? Whatever is before us. So we deal with the situation of today. We deal with the situation of tomorrow. The Lord invites us, be still. Be still and know that He is God. So we need to take control of our thoughts. We need to remember, focus, and focus on the Lord alone. 
Otherwise, when we listen to all these other voices, we'll do so many different things. It was hilarious at the beginning, but when you look at it at a deeper level, then you begin to wonder what is happening. What was the hilarious thing? People buying toilet rolls, toilet paper. Why? Because somebody else was doing it. And then that seemed like the sensible thing to do. And then the next lot of people. How do we survive on toilet paper? They're not the essentials. But we got disorientated. Maybe we went to the supermarket to get some canned food. And then we saw many people, many of them, buying toilet rolls. Then we said to ourselves, oh, better buy, better buy, better buy. So we have lost our focus and we become disorientated. So let us turn to the Bible, huh? chapter 10 of John's Gospel. Verse 3, to the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the flock. The gatekeeper lets him in. The sheep hear his voice. One by one, he calls his own sheep and leads them out. The sheep hear his voice. Are you hearing the voice of the Lord at this time? Or are you hearing the voices of everyone? People who are not clear about the situation. People who are guessing about the situation. Even the experts, they say one thing. Another set of experts say another thing. Some say by June it will be finished. Now they're saying, no, it's December. Some are saying, no, it'll be until next year. Some are saying, we'll find the cure for it. Some are saying, we'll find the antidote for it. Some are saying, we'll find the vaccine for it. And we are listening to this, to that, and to the other. But the voice of the Lord, what does the voice of the Lord say to us? Let's have a look at Matthew's Gospel. Huh? In Matthew's Gospel, we have the scene of the storm. So we go to Matthew, chapter 8, verse 23. This is the storm. Then he got into the boat followed by his disciples. Without warning, a storm broke over the lake, so violent that the waves were breaking right over the boat. But he was asleep. So they went to him and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are going down. And he said to them, Why are you so frightened, you men of little faith? And with that he stood up and rebuked the winds, and the sea, and all was calm again. What did the disciples say? Save us, Lord. Well, we can say that the disciples were overwhelmed by the storm. We can say that the disciples were fixated on the storm. Now, are we not fixated on the coronavirus? Are we not fixated on the developments that are going on? Today, 200 are infected. Today, 1,000 are infected. 200 have died. Are we not consumed by this? Shouldn't we not be consumed by the fact that Jesus is with us all the time? And if we know that Jesus is with us all the time, should we not listen to his voice? So sisters and brothers, I invite you, you know, what are the promises of the Lord? I invite you to reflect on this. What is the promise that the Lord has given to you?
Yes, the Lord can promise many things. And will these things come true? So we go back to Genesis chapter 3, where God promised salvation. And then if we look to Luke's gospel, Matthew's gospel at the beginning, you have the nativity. You have the birth of Jesus. So God promises and God fulfills. So if we look to the scriptures and we read the promises of God, this is where we can become orientated, not disorientated. This is where we can find that anchor to be steady. No matter where the wind is blowing from, we can be steady because we know the Lord keeps His promises. One more, you know, you who have faith, you who believe that Jesus rose from the dead is a fact, is a reality. Should you not, then believe in the promises that the Lord has made for you. Without focusing on the Lord, without being still, this turmoil that is going within us, the sense of how can I be settled will continue. The world is just giving us the news, one after another. The government is giving us instructions, one after another. They are dealing with it in the best way they know how. And as for you, sisters and brothers, what is the best way to rest in the Lord? To focus on the promises of the Lord. So I invite you, you know, this time that you are at home, this time that you're still waiting, waiting for the disease to be over, or waiting for a time when you can go out, to take the Bible, to read and see what God is promising us. Because when you spend your time in reading the Bible and then sharing it with your community, how do you share with your community? No, it's not go and form groups and share, but put it, put it in your Facebook. Share it through Zoom. Thre share it through Skype. Share it through SMSs, WhatsApp. And when you share it, this is where we begin to deepen our awareness of that promise and our desire to live from that promise. And when we continue to do this, this is where we begin to be a lot more comfortable, a lot more calm, and be able to address the other things that are going on in our families. So last week, you would have shared, you would have made history, you would have taken the courage to share the faith with your family members. Today, after this session, go read the Bible and talk to your family members about the promises of God that you had discovered. Don't let this time pass by with another week of wondering, of another week of not knowing, another week of just lingering in the disorientation. Stop. God has given us His Word. God has given us His community. So let us witness the resurrected faith and let us rise above the disorientation. And let us do this because God our Father, Jesus, has given us the graces. Jesus has shown us the example by rising from the dead so that we too can rise above ourselves and our disorientation. Thank you for watching this message. I hope you have been blessed by it. Scripture tells us, a wooden beam firmly attached to a building 
will not be loosened by an earthquake. So the mind firmly resolved after due reflection shall not be afraid of crisis. Can I encourage you to take a few moments to pause, ponder and press in on what you have just learned from Father Terence. How can what he shared be applied to your life? Another thing you can do is to post your comments on the sharing questions that are now on the Facebook group Rise Above. Take time also to scroll through and read the comments posted by other people and try to respond to one or two with kindness and encouragement. Remember to season our words with graciousness and drench them with kindness. Let us use our speech wisely, always to build up, never to tear down. Once again, thank you for being with us. Stay safe, keep a lookout for one another and I can't wait to see you at our next session.